Oh, crap, you scared me. I didn't see you standing there. What, me? I was working, really I was. I was putting some headlight fluid in this truck here. Hey, who are you? What are you doing in my garage? Hey, wait a minute, that's my Game Boy. What gives? Ah, it is. And I am the gaming mechanic. So you're a mechanic who likes playing video games? I do like playing games, but no, I'm the gaming mechanic. A gaming mechanic in a video game is an item or element that the player interacts with that helps aid or create gameplay. Such examples include swinging airline hoses, opening garage doors, moving platforms, switches, slippery oil. Speaking of which, you need to clean that up. Okay, okay, I get it. You represent gameplay mechanics in a game. You're not really an auto mechanic. No, I don't know a darn thing about fixing cars. That's obvious, because that truck doesn't use headlight fluid uses an HID bulb, which stands for High Intensity Discharge. If there's a problem with the bulb, it most likely is a wiring issue or an internal fault. Alright, nerd, what do you know anyway? Why are we talking about fixing cars? Are you a mechanic? Don't you have a mildly annoying NES game? Oh yeah, you're right. Let's get this show on the road. Alright, nerd, we'll be seeing you around in a game sometime. Gaming mechanic, who does that guy think he is? Trying to tell me what to do. You know, he's right. It's been a long time since I've made a new video. And I do seem to recall saying at the end of my last video. So, I know a lot of you have been asking and waiting for a review on Wisdom Trees. Uh, Christian theme, Bible themed games. Uh, but don't worry, that game is in the works and I look very much forward to, very excited to bring that uh, review to you very soon. Well, there's no better time than now. In keeping with the spirit of the season of Christmas, let's play. Bible Adventures for the NES. Now we're finally in this episode going to start talking about those Bible games that were made uh, for the NES by Wisdom Tree. Um, and these games have been reviewed the crap out of by popular game reviewers on YouTube over the years. And for good reason, too, because most of their games were copycat clones of other games, other well-known games, or other games that they have made um, and reskinned with a biblical theme and some Bible verses thrown in. And let's just say the gameplay and the sound and pretty much everything about it was not very good. Um, now, first off, um, just because I'm the Ecclesial Game Nerd, don't think I'm going to take it easy on these Bible-based games. Uh, for one thing, whoever thought it was a good idea to make a video game based off of a Bible story? Uh, just think about it. Um, take Noah and the Flood for an, ex for an example. And uh, Bible Adventures actually does include a game <laughs> based on Noah and the Ark. Um, I could see trying to turn that into a video game for kids. Um, let's see, you're a guy running around 
uh, platforming and there's raging water and thunder and earthquakes and people are running around and screaming for mercy while you watch them all die because we all know what happens at the end of Noah's Flood every single living thing on land all the animals, civilization, all humans died. <laughs> uh, and that's just snow on the flood uh, turned into a video game. Not the greatest idea in my opinion and if you are going to do it you certainly need to do it right with quality. And that's the problem I have with these old NES games made by Wisdom Tree and uh, we'll get to the history of Wisdom Tree here in a moment. Um, but Bible Adventures is just one game that they made. They made a whole lot of games. They made games for the Game Boy. They made a game for the Super Nintendo Noah's Ark 3D. And there's a lot of content here and I think a lot we can learn and I honestly have not played any of these games ever. I never owned any um, when I was growing up so it'll be a brand new adventure for me. I'm excited. Let's get into Bible adventures and Bible themed games by Wisdom Tree. Now, we won't be able to do these games proper justice without first talking about the developers and publisher of these games, Wisdom Tree. Well, there was one company that started in the late 1980s called Wisdom Tree, which was formed from Color Dreams. Now, Color Dreams was a game development company that made unlicensed games for the NES. Since there were not any mainstream action-adventure type games out there, that were based off the Bible or even specifically Christian themed at all, Wisdom Tree wanted to change this by creating video games that were both family friendly and would have a positive effect on their young players, introducing Bible stories to kids in a fun interactive way. Wisdom Tree would do this by taking existing color dream games and slapping a Christian theme on them. How did they pull this off? Well, we'll see in the upcoming videos and games that were created by Wisdom Tree. Okay, now that I finally have the con flat game started, phew, you wouldn't believe what you have to do just to play the game. Now what you have to do is put your game cartridge in the NES, slowly push it down, and push the power button, and wait for seven flashes of the red indicator and hope and pray that the game plays. Imagine being a kid having the patience to jump through hoops and stand on your head just to get the game started and I had to do this like ten times to get my game started. The whole reason you have to do this is because these games made by Wisdom Tree are unlicensed by Nintendo and because of this they could not get their cartridges made by Nintendo, so they made their own, along with special instructions to trick the system into playing them. Let's play Bible Adventures, developed by Wisdom Tree. We have three games, Noah's Ark, Baby Moses, and David and Goliath. Now, did Noah really look like he was this old? I mean, I know he was around 500 years old when he built the Ark, but realistically, since people live to be upwards of seven, eight hundred years old, he probably really looked like he was a fifty-year-old man today. Look, he's holding a dove. Now that's kind of neat. But I did not realize that baby Moses' mom and David had big, bright blue eyes. Let's start with Noah's Ark. Hey, nerd. What the... what are you doing in here? How did you get in here? Just wanted to see how things are going. What you playing, huh? A little bit of Bible adventures, I see. That's a good game to be playing for the spirit of Christmas. So yeah, I'm trying to do a game review here. Why don't you go back to wherever you came from? I can't leave now. We're getting some good stuff here. What do you mean? The animals. The animals? You mean the animals Noah brought into the ark? Yes, the animals are a gaming mechanic. See, the goal of this game is basically picking up the animals with 
super god strength, I guess, and bringing them back to the center of the game scene and dropping them off into the ark. Why is that? How did Noah do that? I guess the details were not given to us, but really? Why in the corn nuts is he picking them up with his bare hands? Okay, thanks for that. Now why don't you please leave the game reviewing to me? Okay, okay, I'll leave. But you won't be seeing the last of me. Sheesh, that guy's annoying. But gaming mechanic is right. There isn't any unique gaming mechanics in this game. Wisdom Tree games are literally poorly done copycat clones of other well-respected Nintendo games. As we will see in future videos. This game here actually reminds me of the gameplay of Super Mario Bros. 2, but with much more cruddier controls and putrid looking graphics. You run around platforming and the only game mechanic is picking up animals. Running and jumping. Super Mario Bros. 2 came before this game and they obviously did it better. You occasionally pick up Bible verses, these little white domino looking things, which displays a Bible verse that may have multiple choice answers to fill in, or it may offer hints for the game. Now given what this game is, and going back to its design purpose and reason for existing, this is a neat idea. We have to remember these games were sold in Christian bookstores for the purpose of being a fun, interactive, Bible learning game for kids who like Nintendo and liked playing video games. Well, let's get right into the game. The first thing you encounter is the cave, and the only thing here is these domino-looking hints that astutely informs you that you can push up to climb up the trees or up the cave walls. But in order to get into the cave, you have to climb up this tree. It's a little late for that, don't you think? I actually like the part of finding Bible verses. A lot of the verses are from the book of Proverbs, which is one of my favorite books of the Bible, along with one of my favorite verses, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You got a verse! So like Gaming Mechanic had stated earlier, the main goal of the game is to pick up items in the level and bring them back to the center of the scene while avoiding these crazy obstacles. Jump, run, and pick up. Those are our game mechanics. It took me a while of playing, but I found Noah can actually pick up more than one animal at once and stack them up above his head. Wow, God must have gave him super strength like Samson had. Just don't cut your hair. There are four levels that consist of collecting animals, then food, and collecting more animals at night while holding a lantern. There are all four the same layout, but with different placement of different animals and fruits throughout the levels. Now there's animals all over everything. Animals on the ark, in the trees. What are cows doing in the trees? How'd they get there? There is wheat and straw on top of the trees and hidden in the caves. There are slippery pigs that you have to seduce with straw or a piece of fruit. Come pig. Come. Gotcha. That'll do pig. That'll do. For a game where you need to jump and platform, the jumping mechanics are loose and it feels more like Noah is running around on ice. Precision jumping is nearly impossible if you need to jump on one of these tree branches, for instance. Noah also runs so fast that he can outrun the camera in the scene. In level 1 there are two snakes that you first encounter, and these are the ones that will hurt you and you can't pick up. Now, why would these be the first ones that you see? Because the real snakes that you're supposed to pick up and bring into the ark are randomly hidden in the level somewhere else. So your first instinct is to try to pick up these snakes, but no, <laughs> they'll hurt you, so don't go after those snakes. Oh yeah, the music soundtrack you've been hearing is the only soundtrack for the entire game, and it is a soundtrack I could easily mimic with a synthesizer. Actually, the sound effects are pretty funny. Listen to the sound of the cow. 
the monkey. And when you drop a piece of fruit on the ground. What are the enemies in this game, you ask? Well, you have snakes in the trees, birds popping their heads out of holes. Ah, what is that dumb bird doing poking its head out in trees at night? Shouldn't it be sleeping somewhere? Get a life, bird. Get a life. Birds big enough to carry Noah away, mad pandas, angry oxen, and coconuts flying all over the place at random. You also have monkeys on top of that, throwing pieces of fruit and acorns at you. I never thought I would see Noah swinging from the treetops like Tarzan. This game has given me a whole new perspective on Noah and the Flood. I never quite understood how annoying and difficult it must have been to gather up all of these animals. Noah's jumping in the trees for birds and owls, picking up lions and tigers, all while avoiding random coconuts and giant birds big enough to carry you away. The coconuts has got to be the most annoying thing you will encounter. They're placed at random in areas like here, in front of the ark door, where you're guaranteed to take damage and they appear everywhere else in the game, even in the trees, all at random. This game is full of glitches. Monkeys get stuck in the ground, raccoons have seizures and float up the trees, then disappear, and the color of the trees change. Sometimes the colors of the ground change. In level 3, where you have to collect food, you have to wait for monkeys to throw food to you and then pick it up off the ground. I don't know about Noah, but I wouldn't want food collected from monkeys. In the final level 4, everything is dark and Noah has to use a lantern in order to light the scene. Otherwise, everything goes black. And if that happens, well, you're poop out of luck. It's actually kind of like this part of the game, as you have to hold on to the lantern the whole time and it adds some variety to the gameplay. After level 4, Noah checks in all of the animals, and you get the first change in music the whole game, with the animation of the ark being tossed in the floodwaters, and then landing on top of the mountain. Well, that's Bible Adventures for the NES. Now, we still have a whole lot of Wisdom Tree games to get through, and uh, in keeping with the spirit of Christmas and leading into the day of Epiphany, the day that we celebrate the three wise men coming to see the newborn King Jesus, the first manifestation of God to the Gentiles, to the rest of us. We're going to be playing Flight to Egypt for the NES. Now, I always thank you, my viewers and subscribers for watching my videos. I really enjoy playing through these games and doing these reviews for you. And uh, I hope you have a merry, merry, blessed Christmas and a happy new year. I look forward to what God's going to be doing going into 2019. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. God bless. You know what? I haven't fed my cat today. Slippery oil as a gaming mechanic. Whoa!